everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. It is a Sunday afternoon. We just got home from church and we actually have some work to do here on the farm today. Normally we try to not do anything on Sundays after church. We try to have a nice restful day. But recently there have been some changes here in our area as far as the livestock auction go. And that means on Sundays is when we need to take cattle to the livestock auction. Now the auction itself is held tomorrow, Monday, uh, starting at 11. Uh, we like to drop our cattle off the day before. It's a lot less rushed for us that morning. Uh, there's hopefully no chance that we'll screw it up and won't be able to get our calves there right. uh, by doing this on Sunday. Right, gives us a little more flexibility. Right, uh, so today we're gonna load the three calves that we're taking to the auction to sell and uh, hopefully we'll go to get, get a good price for them. The three calves are right here behind us. We've showed you them in the last couple videos. They're in what we call our barn lot. These calves are about uh, seven or eight months old, mm -hmm. and I'm not exactly sure what their weights are, but uh, at the end of this video, we're actually gonna show you exactly what their weights were at the auction, and we're actually gonna show you exactly how much we made taking three calves to the auction. Now, a lot of you in the past have asked, um, you know, why do we have so many cows? We obviously cannot eat this many in a year, our family. Um, how do you make money raising cattle? And this is one of the primary ways that we will be making money off of cattle is raising up their calves and then selling their calves either personally, you know, from person to person or at the livestock auction uh, this fall. That's what we're going to be doing, taking three calves to the livestock auction. Right. This is something we're pretty new to. We've mm -hmm. only taken calves to the auction once before, but uh, it's a pretty easy process. What we're going to do today first is we're going to you know, get them loaded into our trailer, and then we'll take them over and unload them at the auction. Now, another thing that we need to accomplish in this video, like I said, today is Sunday afternoon. So Monday morning, tomorrow morning, uh, before we head off to go actually go watch the auction, we're going to need to do some switching around of pigs because uh, our sow, Linda, needs to move in with Charlie, our boar, so that she can get bread and we can have spring piglets. So it's going to be a busy couple days here on the homestead. We're excited that you guys are along. Let's start by loading these calves up and getting them off to the auction. All right, I've got the trailer backed up to our loading chute. So we're about to start loading the three calves into the trailer. But before we do that, we want to take you guys through our system real quick so you kind of know what we'll be doing as we do it. Because once we start actually working with the cattle, we're not going to be able to stop and really talk to the camera. So we thought we'd show you first. So let's head over this way. I'll show you how we move them from the barn lot through our alleyway into a holding pen and then down the alley into the trailer. All right, so the first thing that we'll do is we'll open this gate here which is really just a piece of cattle panel and this will let them into the alleyway that walks down to a holding pen so we'll walk down here so at the end of this alleyway is the holding pen once they're in here we'll shut this gate again So we'll get them into this holding pen, we'll let them settle down just a little bit, and then from here we'll load them into the chute that actually leads up to the trailer. Now ideally we'll get all three of them to go into this alleyway at one time and up into the trailer. Once they're in this alleyway, we have a couple different ways to trap them. Uh, if they're all three in here, we can hopefully just shut this gate and they'll all be in the alleyway. If they're not all in here and we just have one or two that we want to trap, we can shut this sliding gate right here on our squeeze chute. This will shut to hold them in into the squeeze chute. And we can also actually shut the end of the squeeze chute to block them into the trailer. So if we just get one in the trailer and then the other two are behind it, 
we can always trap one in the trailer while we try to get the other two in. So we got multiple ways to trap them in this alleyway. But again, ideally, all three will just follow each other and we'll be able to get them in pretty easily. So that's the plan. Um, hopefully things go as planned, but they don't always. So like I said, we're going to have the camera on a tripod. We're not going to really be able to stop and talk about what we're doing along the way. Right now, once we start moving the cattle around, it's a matter of being safe and keeping us safe and keeping them safe and getting them into the trailer. So uh, we're going to start that now. We'll see how easily it goes. Closer. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. There's grass in there too. Let's go. There we go. Come on. Well, we got the cattle all loaded in the trailer. The entire process took about 10 minutes. Yeah. We're starting to get it down pat pretty well. Yeah, we're getting better at it. Now, I just wanted to set anyone's mind at ease that may have concerns. Uh, you may have seen us tapping them on the butt. It's just the end of an old fishing pole. We don't use cattle prods or anything that's gonna hurt the animals. Um, but this just, it kind of gives them a reminder that they're not supposed to be eating and that they're supposed to be going somewhere. So just a tap with this old fishing pole and it doesn't hurt them at all, but it does keep them moving. So. And, and it's long enough that I feel like I can get close enough to them to get their attention, uh, right. but not so close that I'm feeling uh, unsafe or in danger of being kicked or anything. And it works pretty well. Right. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to drive them over and drop them off at the auction. We're not going to bring you guys along for that part, but we will try to get some footage tomorrow at the auction when they actually get sold. And then, like I said, at the end of this video, we'll show you what we actually made from selling these three calves. Well, we got the calves dropped off at the auction last evening. All of that went really well. It is now the next morning. And before we head off to actually go to the auction to watch the calves be sold, uh, we got a couple things that we need to do with the pigs. So we've got about an hour before we need to be to the auction, so we're going to try to do this as quickly as possible. The first thing that we need to do is we need to move our sow, Linda, who is the one here in the middle, the big black one. She's going to move in with Charlie so that she can get bread so that we have piglets next spring. Then, with the other two that are left behind over here, they need some minerals today. They've been doing a lot of rooting, which for IPPs is not a good sign. I mean, it's not like they're unhealthy. It's just but, not normal. Right. I, IPPs should not do a lot of digging. Um, and if they are, it means they're looking in the ground for some kind of mineral that they're lacking. Right. Uh, and so we're going to be supplementing the two that are left behind um, after we get Linda moved in. Okay. Chances are it's the, the little one that's doing most of the digging. Uh, normally we don't see any digging behavior in the adult pigs, uh, but sometimes as the young ones are maturing, they'll do some digging, uh, and that means we need to supplement them with that mineral. Right, so we'll show you exactly what all of that is after we move Linda. We're gonna try to do this without the use of feed with the moving because we want 
everybody to stay motivated to eat when it's time to take their mineral supplement. So Right. So nobody, none of these pigs have eaten yet this morning. Which is why they're being a little bit crazy. Right. <laughs> but we're going to try to move Linda over in with Charlie. And then, well, I take that back. We are going to give Charlie some feed down on the far end of his pen just to distract him while we move Linda over. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. And hopefully it all just goes smoothly. Um, because like I said, we've got about an hour before we need to be to the auction. Well, talk about how we have this fence. Oh yeah, in. so the, uh, what we did here basically is we took two uh, panels here, a cattle panel and a hog panel. We set them up here. We just kind of made a little bit of a, a temporary pen out here in the alleyway. We'll be able to open the gate on the sow pen and open the gate on Charlie's pen and hopefully Linda will go right over. All right, let's get to work. We've got a busy day ahead of us. Well, in the busyness of the moment, I moved the camera, put it in position, got the feed and forgot to turn the camera on, which is really disappointing because it went really well. Linda is in with Charlie, everything. That was probably the smoothest animal move we've ever had right. with pigs. <laughs> And we didn't get it on film. Ah. So, you guys, uh, sometimes that happens. You know, I'm going to take just a moment to address something. In a recent video, we were accused of being so busy trying to be YouTubers that we were forgetting YouTube, to, to... YouTube stars. YouTube stars that we forgot to do things with our animals. It was on a recent video where we did chores. And someone said, you forgot to feed your chickens. You were too busy trying to be YouTube stars. You totally forgot to feed your chickens. The truth is we just fed them without the camera on. The same thing happened today. We were so busy trying to take care of our animals and do all of that correctly that we forgot to hit record on the camera. To us, being good stewards of our animals and good stewards of our land comes first. That's the most important thing that we do. And getting everything captured on film, unfortunately, has to come second. Mm -hmm. So uh, we apologize. Linda is in with Charlie. Um, so far, they're doing fine. They're yeah. just still distracted by feed. So uh, I'm sure Charlie is going to enjoy having a roommate. <laughs> uh, he usually has a good time. <laughs> so um, now we're going to move on to giving the other two their mineral supplement. Uh, let me grab that so we can show you what it is and we'll show you exactly how we give it to them. All right, so I've got their uh, mineral supplement here and, and their feed. Before I go into the mineral supplement though, I do want to talk to you guys just a minute, a subject that I don't think a lot of people talk about, especially with the IPPs. You know, they're called Idaho pasture pigs. And I think there's a misconception that because of that, they can be raised 100% just on grass. Uh, there's no pig that can be raised just on grass. Pigs need a variety of feed. And really, pigs like this still need a feed just like any other pig. Now, they can get away with less, especially during the times of year when the grass is growing really well. Uh, but you still need to feed them a, a regular pig feed. So we feed what's called a pig and sow uh, ration. And some people in some areas actually have a special feed made up just for the IPPs that have different minerals in them. Uh, we can't do that here. We need to just buy what we can get and then add minerals as we need it. So uh, the mineral replacement that we use is called Replamin. Um, and it's a, it's a gel. And it basically comes in a tube like this, almost like a caulk. And it comes with this special gun that you buy. And there's different settings on here, 5 cc's, 10 cc's, and that's how you can uh, distribute, or that's how you can give them the right amount of, of the gel. Uh, we actually buy this, I think, through Jeffers, if I remember correctly. We don't go through a lot of it. Um, usually about once or twice a year, we need to give them some. We'll give them this once a week until we see the rooting behavior stop. Now I do want to show you as well, when we're talking about rooting with the IPPs, they're not digging big holes like standard hogs do. You know, they're not digging down trying to hit China. Uh, they're just doing some surface rooting. Chances are they're not even destroying the grass really. Most of the grass will come back in the spring. Our goal eventually is to get so we have multiple paddocks where we can do rotational grazing. In fact, we're getting ready to start on their next paddock in just a couple of weeks as soon as we're done moving. Um, so really, we'll, it's when we see this type of behavior starting, we'll be able to move them to a fresh paddock where they have grass, and I think for the most part, that will solve the problem in the future. So for today, we're gonna give them this mineral supplement. What we do 
is we put it right on their grain and then we mix it in so they just eat it with their grain. I'll be real honest, they don't really like it. Um, it must not taste very well. Uh, for a pig to not eat something, it has to taste pretty bad. But they do eat it if you mix it in with their grain. So we're gonna give them, I'm gonna split what we have left here between the two pans. Now it tells you on here how much each pig is supposed to get. For a full grown pig like Myrtle, she would get 15 cc's. For the little pig that we have in here, surely she would get five cc's. Now, there's no way to say, Shirley, you need to eat out of this pan and Myrtle, you need to eat out of this pan. So I'm just gonna put 10 cc's in each pan and they get what they get. Uh, it's not really gonna hurt them. So we put our little peg here in the 10 cc mark and we'll just put 10 cc's worth of the mineral on the grain. We'll mix that up and then they'll finally get their breakfast. It's good to do this when they're good and hungry. Like today, we're a little bit late getting out here to feed. That way they're good and hungry and they'll probably actually eat it. So give me a minute to mix this up. We'll put their pans in and see if they'll eat it. All right, girls, are you ready for breakfast finally? There you go, Myrtle. There you go. Surely there's a whole pan right there for you. There we go. I think Linda, or I think Myrtle knows that something is up. She's like, this doesn't taste normal. Oh well, as long as she eats it, that's all that matters. Like we said, we do this once a week until we see the rooting behavior uh, subside. Normally three or four times is all it takes. And then they'll be good for another six months or so and we'll just keep an eye on them. All right, that's what we need to do with the pigs for today. We'll probably come back and check on them when we get back from the auction, just to make, Linda, make sure Linda is settling in okay with Charlie and uh, we'll make sure everybody's doing well. So we're gonna head to the auction. We're gonna try to get some footage for you guys there of our three calves being sold. And then when we get back, we'll show you exactly how much we made selling those three calves at the auction. <laughs> Oh, it's still a little now. One forty-five, and then they got a mail. Yeah, forty-five dollars, and then they got a mail. Five, 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 and then they got a mail. Six, seven, six, seven, and then they got a mail. Six, seven, seven, nine. Then forty-seven, seven, nine. You get to the day, nine, nine, nine. You get to the day, 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 nine, nine. Four is going to be 18, 8, 61. 154, 18, 8, 61. All right, I'm going to get another book. I have a need to know how to get another one. I'm going 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 to
<laughs> you remember Charlie from last year? Charlie, do you like your girlfriend? Well, it doesn't look like they've done any fighting, at least not that I can see, which is good. We used to have one of our pigs named Mildred, who, when she was put in with Charlie, they would just fight and fight, I mean, to the point where they were really hurting each other. So we ended up getting rid of her. It doesn't look like there's been any fighting going on with Linda. I mean, I don't see any marks on anybody, so uh, that's good. I can't tell if Charlie has, you know, mounted her yet or tried to get her pregnant, but uh, we'll keep an eye on her, on her over the next few days, and we'll probably leave her in here for at least a month. Well, it looks like they're settling in well, but I did notice one thing while we're out here. There's a little bit of rooting going on over in this pen now, which Charlie never does any rooting. So I'm guessing Linda needs some of the mineral supplement as well. So tonight when we feed, uh, we're going to give some to both of them in this pen as well. And we'll just do both pens. We'll do all of the pigs for the next month or so, and hopefully that will solve the problem. But uh, I was assuming it was just the little one doing it, but looks like maybe Linda is as well. So... Um, not a big deal. Like I said, it's it's an easy fix. We just need to take care of it before they do a lot of damage in their pens. All right, let's go talk about how much we made selling these three calves. All right, you guys, here is the check that we picked up from the livestock auction for those three calves. We got a total of $2,405.48. Yeah. I was pretty happy with that. I'm very pleased. That's a that's an average of just about eight hundred dollars per calf. Right. Yeah. And I, I again, I was real happy with that. So we'll give you the breakdown of kind of how how that all broke down. We took three calves. Uh, the first one weighed six hundred and twenty pounds, and it's nice to give you all this information right. on the check stub, so you kind of can keep track of of your you know cattle over time. So. Uh, the first one was 620 pounds. It sold for $154 per 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, the second calf was uh, 460 pounds and sold for $159 per 100. And then the last one was 555 pounds and it sold for $142 per 100 pounds. So I'm not really sure. You know, the buyers that are there at the auction, most of them are big buyers. They buy a lot. And I don't know exactly how they determine what they're going to bid on what. Uh, I'm right. sure they have something very complicated all figured <laughs> out. Uh, the bottom line is I'm real happy with about $800 average per calf. Right. And I, I think uh, really out of all the animals that we raise here on the homestead, the cattle are probably the lowest input. Right. As far as, you know, we they're 100% they're grass fed. Uh, especially like these calves, they were born this spring. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't fed them anything. Well, we fed them one bale of hay when we separated them up here in the barn lot. So we've got one bale of hay in all three of these calves. Right, and while we have our own hay field, uh, we do have someone bales on the half as long as we pay for fertilizer for our hay right. feed. So the only expense that we have into these, this cattle, into the cows, is the fertilizer for the hay. Right, which this year, by the time we paid for the fertilizer and then gave half the bales to our neighbor who cuts the hay for us, it ended up costing us about $30 per big round bale of right, hay. Right, right. So these three calves, we got about $30 total into them. Right. So again, $2,400, we're real happy with that. We still have three more calves to sell from this year. Even though we had 10 calves born this year, four of them were girls, mm -hmm. uh, four of them were heifer calves, so we'll be keeping those to add to our herd of cows. And so we've got six total calves that we'll be selling this year at the auction. Right. Before we got into raising cattle, we had absolutely no idea how much money calves would bring in. So this has been a great learning experience. We figured that maybe there were quite a few of you that it would have no idea uh, how much income you could generate raising cows and raising calves and selling them um, at the livestock auction. So we thought it would be a good learning experience for you guys, us uh, sharing with you how much we got for these calves. Right. So you guys, that's where we're gonna wrap up today's video. Thanks for spending some time with us yesterday, getting those calves loaded up, and then today taking care of the pigs and finally going to the auction and seeing how much we were able to make. 
We're so happy that you guys continue to be with us as we go through this journey of transitioning from city people to country people. Mm -hmm. We've still got a lot to learn, but as we learn it, we love sharing it with you guys so that hopefully someday you can live this lifestyle as well. You guys, if you're enjoying our videos and you haven't subscribed yet, we would love it if you would hit the subscribe button below. And also the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time. Thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.